Hey guys, Matt here again for the Maths Hero, and today we are looking at adding and subtracting numbers which include decimal places, okay? So if this interests you, check it out. Okay, so at this point I just want to recommend, if you don't have a strong understanding of column method, then you should go back and look at one of our previous videos to get that understanding. Otherwise, this video might be a little bit confusing because we're looking at the next step, okay? Okay, so what do we know so far? Well, we've been very used to looking at the place value chart when looking at numbers. And we've learned things like units, tens, hundreds, thousands, even ten thousand and hundred thousands, okay? And we can go much further. What we've learned is that every time we go along one column, we are multiplying that value by ten. So a 1 in the units column represents 1, but a, a 1 in the tens column represents 10, and that carries on the whole way down. We've also learned that when we do a calculation involving addition and subtraction, we always start from our smallest value, which so far has just been units. So let's introduce decimals. Now decimals are a fraction. They are a fraction of a whole. So therefore, they are going to be smaller than a unit, okay? How much smaller? Well, we just carry that same pattern along. Every time we go into the next place value column, we are going to be getting 10 times smaller. So the first place value column for a decimal is tenths, because it is worth one tenth of the whole. So the pattern for what our place value chart would look like would start with tenths, then it would move to hundredths, because that's 10 times smaller, then thousands, and carrying on the same way. The length that our place value chart can go is infinite. Okay, so let's have a question. Let's have 32.5 at 15.2. Now remember, addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which way around we put these in our questions. Okay, so it could be 32.5 at 15.2 or 15.2 at 32.5. It doesn't matter at the moment, okay, because this is addition. Not the same rule for subtraction, but we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so the good news is, we are going to use the same structure, the same columns that we're used to in addition. However, we now have another column that we've not seen before. We now have the tenths column. Now I hear you say, wait, I'm confused. You've always told us to make sure we line our things up with the units. Do we still do that in this case? The answer is yes, but we also look at our decimals. The decimals will always be there. So even if we have a number like 52, just because there's not a decimal after it doesn't mean it's not there. We could have 52.00 and those zeros could go on forever. Okay, so we can always guarantee that the decimal point will be there. Okay, So we're going to use that to line up our numbers and make sure that we put all our decimals on top of each other. If you do that, you're going to avoid all those silly mistakes of putting things in the wrong place and adding the wrong values together. Okay, So very, very good tip. Make sure you concentrate on your decimals and line them up perfectly. Okay, fantastic, now we're good to start. Okay, now I wanna share another good tip with you because another small mistake that I've seen hundreds of times is when people forget to put the decimal point in in their answer. So I suggest at this point, we know where it's gonna be, it's gonna carry on on that same column, so let's put the decimal point in now before we start. Okay, good, now we're ready to start. Now we always start at our smallest value. Now that has usually been units, but in this case, we're gonna look at the tenths column because that is our smallest value. So I've got five tenths added to two tenths, leaves me seven tenths, perfect. Then in my units column, I've got two add five, again gives me seven, and in my tens column, I've got three and a one, which gives me four. My answer is 47.7, fantastic. Now. This was a green chili because we had the same amount of decimal places after our decimal point. You can see that we only had one number after the decimal point in 32.5 and only one number after the decimal point in 15.2. What happens if we have different amounts of decimals? Well, let's have a look. Let's check out our red chili challenge. So sometimes we can get questions where the amounts of numbers after the decimal are different. Take for example, 31.5 add 7.26. We now have a number in the hundredth column. I've got a six, okay? So here is where that top tip of lining up our decimals really comes into its own. If I put my decimals in line with one another, then everything else falls in around it. I have 31.5 plus 7.26. 
but I've got a couple of gaps. Now in addition, that's not really that important, but it's really important for subtraction, so let's understand what we can do. 31.5 holds the same value and is exactly the same as saying 31.50. That zero doesn't change the value of the number, but it's called a placeholder. We can put it there so that we can have the same amount of digits in both of our numbers. So I've got 31.50 add, yep, yeah, you guessed it, 07.26. Okay, so now I've got the same amount of digits in both of my numbers. Now it's really important to understand what these placeholders are because we're not just putting a random number in there, we're putting a zero, something that doesn't hold any value. Okay, adding a zero to the beginning or end of a number doesn't change it at all. Okay, so that's really important to understand. Now again, we're just going to solve this from the smallest value, which in this case is hundredths. So 0 add 6 is 6, 5 add 2 is 7, 1 add the 7 is 8, and 3 add the 0 is 3, leaving me 38.76. Okay, well done. Well, that is about as hard as decimals can get in addition. We can have much bigger ones, but it's not going to get any harder. It's just going to get longer. Okay, so that's really good. Well done. So, let's check out subtraction. Okay, so let's have a look at 38.6, subtract 5.53. Now the good news is, we're just gonna use exactly the same idea of laying everything out in columns. That's the good news. The bad news is, we've gotta be ultra careful here, okay? Because subtraction is not commutative. If the question says 38.6, subtract 5.53, we have to do it that way around. And the 38.6 will go at the top, subtract 5.53 will go underneath. Okay, it's not commutative, it'll be a completely different answer if we change them around. And the second thing, and the one that everybody makes mistakes on at some point, is forgetting to put in our placeholders. And let's see why that's really important, okay? So, if I don't put any placeholders, and I put 38.6, subtract 5.53, I might be inclined, when I see the three, I might think, well, there's nothing there to subtract. But that's not what the question is asking me. I'm subtracting this number from the top number, so I've got to be subtracting the three from something. Even though there's nothing there, what do we now know? That's right, there is a zero, so we can put that there. And that's really important because zero subtract three is very different to three subtract zero. Now, can we take three away from nothing? No, so we need to borrow from next door, just like we would do in any of the subtraction question. So, borrow from next door, take the six to a five, Bring the one across, 10 subtract three is seven, five subtract five is zero, eight subtract five is three, and three, don't forget the placeholder, three subtract the zero is three, giving me an answer of 33.07. So I'm gonna say that again, it's really important to use your placeholders in subtraction, don't forget. Okay, now in a minute, I'm gonna let you have a go at solving some questions yourself, but first, let's do a little review, okay? so. First things first, remember that decimals are fractions, they are smaller than a unit, so therefore they have a smaller value. That's the first thing to be really, really, really clear on. Next thing, we're going to line up our numbers as normal, except we're going to be focusing on using the decimal point to align our numbers. Third, placeholders are essential to put in there to avoid making small mistakes. And the last thing we need to review is we always start from our smallest value, which now might be anything from tenths to millionths or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put some questions on the board behind me. One, two, three, four. And it's your job now to try and solve them. I've got two addition and two subtraction. Good luck, if you get them all right, fantastic. You're ready for our next video. If you don't, don't worry, stop, go back, look at where you might have made a mistake and correct yourself. Okay, don't move on until you're completely ready. So, so I'm gonna disappear and this is a good time for you to press pause on the video, take some time and see how you get on, okay? Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you got those all right. If you did, fantastic. If not, like I say, go back and have a little look at where you might have been in a state. So let's look at what's next. Today we've been looking at adding and subtracting decimals. Next video we're going to be looking at multiplying decimals. So multiplying, for example, 5.3 multiplied by 15. Okay, so that's going to be our next video. Check it out if you want to. Thank you very much for watching this video. Really appreciate it. Like and subscribe to the channel, guys. Really helpful. Thanks very much. But for now, Matt Zero, gone.